I mean, one of the things that really stood out for me, having read the Red Cross report together with the memos, uh, is that in one of the memos it says that the, the enhanced interrogation techniques uh, minus waterboarding were used on 28 right. people held by the CIA. Well, only 14 of those people ever made it to Guantanamo Bay, which mm -hmm. means the Red Cross only interviewed half of the people who experienced uh, the enhanced interrogation techniques. I find that extraordinary. That means we have one half of a story. And, you know, I, you know, I wonder if you know, a commission could bring to light those kinds of things. And, um, you know, there certainly were lots of problems, as you say, inherent in commissions, such as finding consensus, and there's always political issues, and who will testify, and under what circumstances will they provide testimony, and will it be under oath, and won't it be under oath? Those questions always come up again and again on these issues of commissions. But, you know, the 9-11 Commission did bring quite a bit of information to light, and it seems that, you know, it certainly helped create legislation, and broad changes, and uh, I, I wonder what such a commission could could bring to light uh, about uh, all the things that we still don't know, and as you said, and I think you're right, that it's not just history, it's, it's still occurring, and until the CIA or the U.S. government even acknowledges that they were holding, you know, Really, I mean, really, if you if you take the 14 people who were sent to Guantanamo Bay and you read in the memos that, you know, in May 2005, there were 94 people in the program. Right. You know, we're talking about 80 people mm -hmm. uh, whose names and identities, uh, you know, have, you know, may, may be known in some way through some public reporting, some incidents that have happened in other countries but have still to this day not been acknowledged by the U.S. government in any way. I know. We're talking about really this very large detention program that includes Iraq, Bagram Air Base, um, mm -hmm. uh, the Black Sites, of course, Guantanamo, of course. And if we talk about this in those broad terms, we're talking about a great many people, tens of thousands if you include uh, all of those held at one time or another in Iraq. You're getting up near 100,000 people if you add everybody into Iraq, uh, from Iraq into that number and everyone from Afghanistan. And I think, you know, I tried to write about this a little in my last New York Review piece, that if you look at this in any depth, you can see that the interrogation program, broadly conceived, was kind of a disaster. Uh, that is, it was put together ad hoc, um, there was a philosophy at the beginning of just kind of throwing everybody as quickly as possible into detention. Uh, if you had any doubt about them, uh, you know, if people were brought to you at Bagram Air Base or Kandahar, if you had any doubt about them at all, uh, you sent them to Guantanamo. Uh, because no one wanted right. to have on their head uh, the notion that they had freed uh, someone who then went on to commit violent acts or terrorist acts. Uh, mm -hmm. So the incentives all worked in the opposite direction. Uh, put them in the pipeline, keep them detained. And as I saw personally in reporting in Iraq, um, this account, this basically led to a kind of breakdown uh, in the interrogation program uh, itself. You know, Abu Ghraib was just full of people, nine and ten, according to the Red Cross, who got this number from an intelligence officer. Nine and ten shouldn't have been there. And you're talking about 20,000 people. And when nine and ten shouldn't have been there, the intelligence officers are spending all of their time uh, interviewing people who they shouldn't be interviewing. Uh, and they can't get rid of them, they can't uh, free them. Um, so you had basically wholesale arrests, uh, and right. nine tenths of the people shouldn't have been uh, examined. Um, this whole right. thing has it, to be the put explosion under a of, uh, the explosion of the of the prison population in Iraq. I, I agree with you. Is is completely under under told and under appreciated aspect and there's there was a line also we we haven't really discussed the um, the Senate Armed Services report that also came out in in a, a slightly redacted but still pretty comprehensive form that uh, that piggybacked onto the release of the uh, interrogation memos and there's a line in there that I think you uh, of all people would really appreciate and it's one line that's very, very far back in the in the report, but it talks about the exportation of detainee treatment mm -hmm. uh, beginning in Afghanistan, circling to Guantanamo Bay, and then uh, and then being introduced uh, into the prison population in Iraq, which 
uh, ended up with uh, the world seeing the, the famous photos of Abu Ghraib. Right. You mean the relationship, you know, Schlesinger, if I understand you rightly, I'm sorry I was distracted mm -hmm. there for a few seconds mm -hmm. by some something going on here, but you're talking about the mi so-called migration of techniques across these various populations. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and of course one thing to remember here, legally speaking, uh, from beginning in October 2002 and then ratified in February 2003, um, the decision was made um, not to, excuse me, that's an, a year earlier, sorry, it's October mm -hmm. 2001 and then uh, February 2002, the decision was made um, that Taliban prisoners and certainly Al Qaeda prisoners would not be sheltered, would not enjoy the protections of the Geneva Convention. That was according to a presidential right. order uh, made public in February 2002. On the other hand, the Iraq War, prisoners taken in the Iraq War were always supposed to be um, under the protection of the Geneva Convention. So right. you had different legal uh, categories depending on the theaters. Uh, of what in effect was the same war. Uh, so interrogators who in Guantanamo uh, were able to do certain things were then sent uh, to Iraq where legally speaking they shouldn't have been able to do certain things. Uh, the Schlesinger Commission among others, uh, which was an early investigation in 2004 after mm -hmm. Abu Ghraib, talked about techniques migrating, migrating, that was his word, uh, from Guantanamo to Iraq. Um, and the fact is, you know, you had law breaking in Guantanamo, you had law breaking in Iraq, um, and this stuff, the legal regime was very confused, the legal decisions were confused, the whole thing was a mess on a rather epic uh, scale. And I happen to agree with Philip Zelico, who was a counselor, legal counselor to Condoleezza Rice, um, mm -hmm. when he says that one of the main problems in adopting this program was the question that was posed early on by policymakers was, what can we do, not what should we do? And the what can we do is a question answered by lawyers. And as we know from the Department of Justice memo, answered uh, really in awful terms, uh, embarrassingly awful legal terms by lawyers. But it should have, first of all, been a question asked of policymakers. What should we do? What, the, what should the United States do in this situation? And there's very little evidence that anyone ever really did pose the question in those terms. Uh, they simply right. I think it's right. I think it's interesting that it's it's Phil Zelico who's saying that, but I don't see mm -hmm. any of the uh, the so-called principles of the Bush administration coming out and saying that as well. I don't see Condoleezza Rice coming out and 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 saying the same kind of thing that Phil Zelico is saying. No, it's true. Although it should be said to be fair that. All of these people feel themselves very much at the moment, very much at risk, and I, I'm not sure whether mm -hmm. they'll be saying much of anything uh, publicly. I may be wrong, um, but uh, the vice president has been very obviously forthright and aggressive. Uh, other high right. officials um, have not been, and um, this is partly, I think, because they sense themselves uh, at some degree of jeopardy at the moment, yeah. and I don't, I don't blame oh, them. I just lost Mark. Um, Hold on, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad, though, Mr. Zalico has has made uh, some of his thoughts on this public, and I wish more high officials uh, would do that because this is, after all, a, an argument about what government should be doing. Um,